All right, Chad. So finally back after about three years away. As I said, it's it's been far too long, man. I was always hoping you'd come back, but I'm wondering, have you done uh, enough interviews in media now that you almost regret that you came back? <laughs> no, man. It, it has been crazy the last oh shit, probably a week now. But um, it's cool, man. It's all part of it. It's something I haven't done much of in the last two and a half years or so. So um, it's it's definitely been great as far as helping grow the brand and helping my businesses grow. So. Uh, bring it on, man. I don't mind at all. I love it. I love it. So does it feel real yet? I mean, this is still kind of the honeymoon phase, right? The announcement, everybody's excited, but now you got to go put the work in, right? So I mean, yeah. is it, does it feel real yet? Or is it going to be, you know, once camp actually starts, is that when it starts to set in what, what you've done here? No, man, I've, uh, this is something we've actually been, been toying with for probably the last year. Um, and I knew this was coming for a while now. So it definitely isn't something that just just happened. Uh, we just waited to announce it. Obviously, I, going on Rogan's was huge, and um, you know it was definitely something I've always wanted to do. So I wanted to save that announcement for for the podcast, and uh, I just felt like that was going to be the biggest platform that I could get that out on. So, um, but yeah, man, no, it's it's uh, I'm excited. Like it's something new. It's something um, I've never done before, which for me makes it exciting. You know, I've always wanted to box. Um, even in my UFC, you know, career, boxing and wrestling were like my two favorite things. Um, and those are definitely my two favorite things to train during a camp, you know, boxing, hitting mitts with my boxing coaches and boxing sparring was, I loved it. So, um, you know, I think my style is going to translate really well to this. I mean, they're very short rounds, so you can go out there and just be as explosive and powerful as possible. Um, obviously we got to be really careful with accuracy and making sure we're hitting where the punches need to land and not breaking these things. So, um, I've talked to a few other people that have been doing it and just kind of getting some insight, um, and toughening up the hands is definitely something everyone's recommended. There was a couple fighters that, um, their first fight, like going into like the third and fourth round, they couldn't even make a fist. Their hands were so bruised and swollen. So, um, that's definitely something we've started working on is just toughening up the hands. Um, but outside of that, man, I'm just excited. The the boxing training and just focusing 100% on one thing is something I haven't done since my wrestling days, man. And it's I feel like I'm making huge gains already. Um, and we, we basically started camp on Monday. So I've been training, though, for the last couple months. So I feel good, man. I'm ready. That's awesome. So tell me how you toughen up the hands. Is that kind of like old school, like Muay Thai, where they used to be like kicking trees and stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't say probably anything that extreme, but uh, <laughs> one of the ways is uh, one of my, my business partners with the American Almond Beef used to do karate and stuff growing up. And he gave me this board, basically, that you do push-ups on, fist push-ups. And it's obviously wood. And then it's got like this really rough grip tape on the outside of it, almost like a skateboard grip tape. Um, and you just start off, you know, five pushups on it. Um, and then you build up to 10, 15, 20 to 50 to 100, you know, whatever. But it toughens the skin because obviously catching teeth, the bottom jaw, or, you know, sometimes just punching the, the skull will come, it will sometimes split your knuckles. Um, so I think that's going to be good as far as toughening up the skin. And then obviously just having a, that body weight on top of the knuckles uh, is just going to add that extra. Uh, strength i think in there so that's one of the things we're doing and then um just you know lightly punching we have like a wooden you have like a wooden board with a real thin piece of padding over the top of it and you can just do like high rep you know low power punches on that stuff and just toughen it up but yeah it's going to awesome. be crazy man something so new and unique we'll see <laughs> that's awesome so where, where are you training for this i mean is it is it still alpha male and and, and how do you train because you can't obviously you can't train with bare knuckles so do you, do you just put on the smallest gloves possible so that it simulates as close as it can yeah yeah i am still still here in sacramento team alpha male um and then yeah man i mean we've been kind of mixing it up i do some stuff with just hand wraps on with nothing over my knuckles punching the bags um, even we've hit mitts, you know, just straight bare knuckle. Most of the stuff is still just like your standard boxing training, being able to throw that power and build that cardio and explosiveness, doing all that stuff. But I mean, obviously, yeah, we can't spar bare knuckle. It's just, it's one of those things you got to just train, uh, as close as you can and then 
just rely on everything else once you get in there to take over. So like I said, it's something I've never done. So we'll see. We'll, we got this first one October 22nd. Um, I'm sure. So my boxing coach, Eddie, Eddie Hoke, has already fought twice in bare knuckles. So at least I have some insight and he's brought some stuff back and he's kind of fine tuned some stuff, especially as far as like toughening the hands and um, basically telling you how fast those rounds go, man, the two minute rounds. And we've been doing uh, mitt work at two minutes and I'm, it feels like 30 seconds. It's, it goes by quick. So that can benefit you or hurt you. I mean, if you, if you're getting picked apart and you really need to make up some, some point difference there, you got to know it's like these rounds go quick. Um, but it, you know, it's also great. Like I said, where you can get out there and just use that power and not have to ever pace yourself and just let it rip. So, yeah. I'm excited to see it. I know we have a date. Do we have an opponent yet? Has that been worked out or are we still in the process? No, still in the process. Um, and it's one of these things I think with bare knuckle, it's still, you know, it's a new organization. They're still trying to, they don't, they don't have the huge team like the UFC where they could plan out five, six events ahead of time. It's, I think right now they're kind of going event to event. So it's, you know, I just got to be patient here and just understand that. But um, no, I, we actually just messaged uh, Feldman yesterday or the day before, and they're still trying to figure it out. So hoping sooner than later, man, I'd like to watch some, um, some tape on, on my opponent if possible. And just so at least start putting the game plan together, but we'll see. I can't imagine they're getting a lot of volunteers. I bet a lot of people <laughs> aren't really putting their hand in the air and say, yeah, give me Chad minutes. So Chad, let me ask you, you I remember seeing you back at Quintet and I remember asking you then like, Hey, come on. Are you sure this isn't going to get you you're fired up to want to come back? And you're like, nah, nah, I'm good. I'm good. At that point, were you already thinking about doing something or did you really believe like, no, I'm, I'm done with competition at this point? Um, and it, was, it wasn't it was being done with competition. It was just done with with the UFC. You know, it's honestly at that. I mean, when I signed my contract, which was what, four or five years ago or something, it was a good contract, you know, but I signed an eight fight contract, you know, and. That fight now, I think I still have three or even four fights on that. And the pay is just not good. I mean, not anything against the UFC at the time. Like I said, it was. But, you know, and and towards the end of my career, I had fins and feathers that I started. The the Celebrity Outdoor Service where we're taking people hunting. Um, we now have the American Alma Beef Company. And I have a, a, a dry rub and cookbook that we were just coming out with. But these are all things that I started, like, making more money doing that than I was in the UFC. And it's like, God, is this, I mean, I'm getting punched in the face. I'm getting kicked in the head. Like, is this something that I want to do anymore? Like, why am I doing this? And it just, at the time it made sense. I was just done. You know, it didn't make sense to get back in there and keep doing it, but you know, it doesn't, I never, I never left thinking like, dude, I'm, I'm past my prime. Like I'm done. You know, it's time to hang them up. It was just, it didn't make sense for me anymore. And I didn't have, that motivating factor, you know, I was pouring my heart and soul into these other, these other businesses. And, you know, this is a dangerous game. If you're not hundred percent into it, I mean, bad things can happen. So I just decided like, it's time to hang them up, but you're right. I mean, when we talked at that point, I truly was like, no, I'm not coming back to the UFC is what I was thinking. But um, man, this is such a huge opportunity. This is a huge payday, um, you know, and, and like I said, honestly, the UFC is being extremely cool about this because I still have fights on my contract. They technically could have just said, screw you. And they're allowing me to go make funny uh, money for my family and, and go out there and compete and, and, and do this, you know? And so I don't know. We'll see, man, if, if the UFC can kind of come back and maybe after these, this, this contract's done and they maybe throw some different numbers my way, I might, I might be open to it, but we'll see, man. It's just, it's one of those things. Like I, I have a lot of good things going for me. It's, it's not anything I really need to do. Um, you know, this is exciting. It's, you know, it's something new and, and, and it's different. And so I'm like excited to go on there and do it. But, um, and like I said, it's a good payday. So it's, it's one of those things I'm going to do and we'll see what happens after. Yeah, man. I knew you had that, that drive for competition deep yeah. inside you, man. It's always been there. So I got to ask though, how'd the conversation go with the wife, right? Because I mean, everything's good. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure she appreciates the payday coming in, but who yeah. likes seeing their loved one go out there and get punched in the face, right? It's yeah. so scary. I don't think people realize how scary it is for, for loved ones to have to watch that, how much pressure it is. So what was that conversation where you're like, honey, check this out. I'm going to compete again and I'm going to go bare knuckle box. And she has to look at you like, what in the hell are you talking about? She's just like... <laughs> 
No, I mean, it's, uh, it was definitely something that took, took a little bit of persuading for sure. And she's <laughs> still not a hundred percent in on it, but you know, she's very supportive of anything I want to do. It's just, she's like, are you kidding me? Like what? Well, I thought we were done with all this. I mean, my UFC fight, she'd be just front row, just like, I can't watch, you know, and which is understandable. I mean, I, I put myself in her position. Like, I, I don't know if I could do it. You know, I'd be freaking out, but um, yeah, man, it's, it is, it's one of those things, but here, here's what I, I think one of the things that I kind of explained to her that made a little bit more sense and kind of almost gave her the idea of giving me the blessing was, you know, I don't, I'm not, I think MMA is honestly a lot more dangerous. You know, you got people throwing head kicks, like whizzing past your head or connecting lights out. You got big knees, elbows, you know, people running submissions and tearing tendons and ligaments and, you know, really, I got to focus on boxing now, very short rounds. And I think the, the concussion is going to be the exact same. I mean, you take a bare knuckle and you put an MMA glove on it and you got a half an inch or less of padding. So it's not like, you know, you you have a full boxing glove that kind of eats some of that. It's, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. I think the difference is, is your knuckles are sharp. So there's going to be a lot more cuts, but which is associated with brutality. It's like blood. People are just like, oh, my God, it's brutal. Um, but, you know, I've been cutting UFC, you know, head kicks and blood all over my face. And it's just it's just part of the job, man. That's <laughs> that's something we have to expect from time to time and just, you know, put it behind us and keep going. So I think I think explaining that to her definitely helped a bit. So. We'll see. I don't know if she's going to be able to watch it, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually true, though, right? Like, it looks more violent just because there's more blood and cuts. But when you really lay yeah. it out like that, there's less things to worry about and less less tools for the opponent to use. So I think you're yeah. actually right. Now, here's the big question. And I know I, this this is key right here. Now, Bare Knuckle is a little bit less PC than, than corporate UFC now. So mm -hmm. can we go back to Chad money shot Mendez now at this point <laughs> or 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 is it a little too late in the game are you are you a little more mature oh, now that, that doesn't oh, apply yeah. <laughs> we might be a little too late in the game for that one <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask Faber he's the one that that passed that nickname down so we'll see if we can bring that one back <laughs> <laughs> I love just throwing it out there man I mean oh, that, that, that could play in bare knuckle I forgot about that one <laughs> that's, <good. laughs> that's great well let me ask you so did you have you maintain following the UFC at all I mean obviously you know you went out on a loss but hey that guy's done pretty good since then I mean yeah. have you kept following the sport or is it just like oh I'm done I don't even want anything to do with it no I, I keep up I mean I'm, I'm not like a complete diehard with everything going on I just don't have the time but yeah I keep up on obviously teammates and some of the bigger fights for sure yeah very nice very nice well, look, this is a start. I don't know if we'll get you back in the UFC cage, but at least to get to see you compete again because you did walk away in your prime. And I, I thought yep. for sure that I was like, there's no way it's going to stick. But uh, t talk to me, I guess, about the path here. I mean, is this, you know, I talked to David Feldman the other day and he said, I think one of the reasons we got Chad is because, you know, we presented a path for him. We showed him, hey, here's where you could do and here's where we can go. It wasn't just throw money and let's see what happens. And, and he said, yeah. look, three fights, he could, you know, we could have him in a title fight in his third fight and, you know, yeah. champion and all that. So, do you feel that way? I mean, do you feel, hey, I'm committed to doing this? Or is this kind of a wait and see for this first one? I mean, what if you get in there and you're like, hey, this was exciting, but I don't I don't like this at all? Yeah, and that and that's kind of what I've talked about. I mean, ideally, I'd like for this to be a path and and would love to, you know, eventually get there and fight for the title. But like like you just said, I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna get in there and fight that first one. Things could be completely different, and I turn left and say, screw that. But I have a feeling I'm gonna probably enjoy this pretty good so <laughs> we'll see but um yeah man we'll just i think i think what's so great about this and the, and so great about this opportunity is it's open-ended like we can decide what we want to do at any time you know which is so cool and i feel honored and blessed to even have the opportunity you know i'm 36 years old i still have you know multiple years in my prime i feel um, this is a, a, a huge opportunity that popped up. Like you said, I can go left, I can go right and, and we'll basically figure it out as we go. But yeah, I think ideally I would, yeah, like to fight these three fights, maybe that third fight, fight for the title, um, hopefully get that belt and then just kind of see where we go from there. 
That's awesome, man. Well, Chad, I'll be honest. Personally speaking, selfishly speaking, I'm happy to see you back, man. I always enjoyed you being in the sport. And it's not MMA, but it's still something we can watch. It's still something that we can cover you. So I'm uh, I'm glad to have you back, man, and uh, wish you continued success. And I'm sure we'll talk again as as uh, as this thing gets closer. Heck yeah, man. Thank you. It's always good talking with you.